Hey guys, Corey from Aquarium Co-op. Today I'm going to show you my build on um, the Mini Musk Turtle Tank and the thoughts that go into building a turtle tank. And so let's go ahead and get started. Go ahead and like this content. If you like this subject, we'll make more turtle videos. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next one. But here we go. So here we've got, there's no water in it yet. This is an acrylic tank. This is a 50 gallon and it's made by Seaclear. I bought it used. And uh, so it's 48 inches long, 15 inches front to back, and then uh, about 18 or 19 inches tall. So, knowing that I'm doing mini musk turtles, these turtles, you know, only get about that big, this is going to be a nice big habitat for them. If you were doing red-eared sliders or some map turtles or anything that's going to get bigger, you know, maybe upgrade to a five foot long tank or, you know, the bigger the better really. But this is going to work for me because I'm going to do it on an automatic water change system. So I'm here in my fish room and everything's hooked up to automatic water change. Uh, but some of the things we need to do here is I want to make it so that there's a lay box where the turtles can lay their eggs. Uh, I want to make it automatically change water. I want to build a platform for them to crawl onto and that's what this cork bark is for. We're going to cut it down to size and wedge it in there so that uh, they can use this to crawl up and into the lay area. And so what we need to do now is we need to figure out where we're going to run the water height. Now a lot of turtle tanks you see, they run the water down really low. I don't like that. I like to give my turtles as much water as possible. I've even considered uh, if I had red sliders or something like that that I'm not going to breed, but I just want to them to bask, I would build an above tank basking area and have the heat lamp and everything and maybe I'd have it be like this big and they can just go up into it. But being that these mini musk turtles, they don't like to bask and they rarely are going to climb into this egg laying box, I'm thinking I just put it like down here. You know, I, I basically want it as high as I can get the water level without them being able to crawl out and me have to make extra tops or guards or things like that. Um, so I need to do a little bit of playing here and then I need to eliminate plumbing. So like this plumbing here is not useful to me. This is, you know, they were using it as a feeder goldfish tank um, at the store I bought it from. And I've got some plumbing over here too. And I'm gonna to need to drill a new bulkhead wherever I want the water level to be. So if I want the water level to be right here, I need to drill a bulkhead right there. And so that's the next step is planning. And then we'll start, we'll actually start executing those things uh, here very shortly. And I'll show you as the build goes, kind of chime in and uh, show you the overall project at the end. We're still gonna cycle it and things like that. So there won't be turtles in it today but you can tune into the next video after this one and you'll see, oh yeah, the turtles have moved in, it's working well, that type of thing. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and get started and uh, we'll chime right back in with some progress. So now I've got the auto water change plumbed in. Let me show you that. So right here, got this coming out the back here. This is at the water level line. It's gonna drain to this pipe and uh, it coincides with being lower than this five and a half gallon tank. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill this five and a half gallon tank full of sand so it's a nice lay box for the turtles. And we gotta build a ramp so they can get in there. But I also need to finish plumbing the, the fill lines which are gonna come right down from here from the water change. And then gotta, I'm gonna put in some sponge filters so I've got those as well to do. And I've got to build the dock system as well. So, you know, keep watching and uh, I'll tune in when I get some more of that done and show you how it goes. So next what I've got to do is measure the inside diameter, not diameter, inside dimensions of the tank. And then I need to cut this cork bark so that it is very snug. And so when you're doing this, you want to cut it large and keep kind of filing it down. So find, you know, you want to find the, the shortest point here. And so that's from here to here and start trimming up. So like we'll trim this 
and then we'll start trimming as much as we need so that it'll wedge in there. And you'll see how it's going to end up once it's wedged in. And uh, you want a tight fit because cork bark floats. And if you just put it in there, it's going to bobble all around and the turtles won't want to use it because it's not stable. But if you wedge it in there, it's nice and rock stable and they'll have a great platform. And so I'm going to start doing that and then I'll chime in when we're actually uh, putting it in the tank or I've got it situated in the tank. Now I want to show you guys actually wedging it in there. It's really tight. I don't have any water in it yet, but what you need to remember is once I fill this water, it's going to bow a little bit from the water pressure. So if it's loose right now, once we fill it with water, it's really going to be loose. And uh, so it's going to be really tight right now. And so it's a little scary having it this tight, but you know, essentially what you're doing, you know, it's already pretty tight here, but if I get this back out, the goal is to get it up over this lip here so the turtles can crawl onto it. And uh, you keep just moving it and working it until it's basically going to be level and over there. So I'm going to go ahead and wrestle this into place because it takes two hands, and then I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so I'm going to rest this cork bark just like this. So it, the water level is going to be, you know, so it comes up to, let's say, here or something like that. My turtles could totally bask up here. They can easily make it into this. i got to fill this up with sand still so that it would be level and they can lay in there. Then they're going to have all this room down here to be swimming. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and start turning on the water and see how it goes. So I've got the auto water change on and uh, let me show you how that works. So right here, we've got our four valves that I plumbed in to the auto water change line. And you can see here, this is how fast the water is coming in. And this is going to happen for 15 minutes twice a day. Now, I've got it calculated, so it basically does 10% uh, of a water change, like on a 75 gallon. I don't know what it's going to do on this tank yet, because it's only 50 gallons, but then on top of that, it's only... Uh, going to be two-thirds full roughly, so I have to do a calculation of how much water change, but being that I stage all my water, uh, I don't think it'll be a problem. I don't think I can change too much water really on these turtles. It'll allow me to really keep high bio loads if I wanted to, and uh, yeah, so I'm kind of letting this fill, and I'm going to work on getting this filled with sand, and uh, you know, that's... All I can really do at this point, I mean, I, I could move the turtles, but I want to use them for another experiment at the moment. But the turtles are over here. This is their old tank, 55, no basking spot. You know, there's one that I bred that they laid in the water. Uh, but the survival rate when they lay eggs in the water is way lower than if they are laying them in a nest box. Um, but well, I'm going to move these guys once I finish up the experiment with the oxygen meter here, because I don't want that load to change. Uh, so it won't skew any of the results, so, yeah. So here's the tank, full of water, water level set, uh, and we can talk about some more options for different types of turtles. Uh, obviously, you can run this bare bottom, or I'm probably going to fill it with crushed coral, so I maintain a high pH and my alkalinity doesn't drop, um, but I'm going to move that with the turtle, so it moves beneficial bacteria with me. The water level here is right to the black trim of this five gallon tank and uh, I need to add some sand and some sphagnum moss to keep this moist. They want it moist when they lay. Uh, so I left a little bit of room in there, I still got to mix in the moss. Now the mini moss turtles from the breeder I've got them from, I've kept them for years, that type of thing, I've actually never seen them bask once, not even once. They will definitely hang out right here and put their heads at the water. But getting out of the water, I've never seen them use uh, ultraviolet light or a heat lamp. Uh, I'm, I'm going to play around with it some with this setup, but if you were setting something like this up for sliders or most other turtles that aren't mud turtles that do want to bask, definitely you would set up uh, a heat lamp and UVB and things like that, um, you know, which is not too hard to do. You guys can research that. If you already own a turtle, I'm sure you're already doing that, so you kind of understand how that's going to work. But I do recommend using the most amount of water possible. This is going to cut down on smells for you. It's going to keep water quality up. 
Um, you know, I'm using a sponge filter here because I'm changing so much water. They're actually very good at uh, digesting waste. Some turtles, though, will eat sponge. They'll just take bites out of it. So if you have a turtle that's doing that, that's not going to work. You'll have to use a canister filter. I hate the little internal plug-in filters. They're just not strong enough for turtles, even though they're marketed for them. You're much better off getting a big canister filter and doing lots of water changes. Uh, this tank, as you've seen earlier, is going to get two water changes every single day, no matter what. It's automatic. I don't even have to be in the country. I don't have to be in the building. It just automatically happens. Um, so yeah, and I'm so there's some updates that are going to come down the road here. Um, might update the lighting a little bit. I've got a stingray plants pl or a, a stingray which grows plants. I might build in a like a cage here. And what that cage is going to do is I'm going to put plants in the gravel and let them grow. And as plants grow out of the cage, the turtles are going to eat them because my turtles eat plants and most turtles do but you get the benefits of the plants consuming nitrogen. Also, you get the benefits of them getting fresh greens. That's a win-win situation. Um, but I'll do a different video on how to do that. And uh, I'll definitely update this. Like once I finish up my experiment over there with the oxygen, uh, the turtles are gonna move in. We'll get this, uh, we'll get the gravel in, things like that. And I will update how it's working. I'll get the sphagnum moss in there with a little bit more sand. And you know, we'll evaluate how the turtles are using this. I think it should be just fine. I'll get get you on their level there. And so, you know, you can see that it comes down in quite a bit. So this turtle could swim and totally walk up. Whereas if we didn't have a ledge like this, they would have to pull themselves up into there. And I just don't think they're gonna do that. Now, if I wanted to, let's say I didn't want to change the level in here at all. I can use scraps from the cork bark, which is cork bark I found at a reptile store. And to find big pieces front to back is kind of hard, and you got to search for it. And something like this costs me about 45 bucks. It's not cheap, but it works way better than turtle docks. But I've got a few pieces left down here that I had to cut off, right? And so, like this piece right here might work. Uh, you know, so now they can make that transition a little easier there. Ooh, you can see this got a little bit, a uh, little bit loose. You know, it's still in there, it's gonna hold, but it got a little bit loose when it filled with water. Uh, this cork might expand a little bit still, so it might come in. If I, if I get worried about it, I'll pull it up over this ledge here to get some more support, but I think this will work. These turtles aren't very heavy. But now they've got an easy transition from both sides. Um, yeah, so that's, that's a basic turtle setup in my opinion. This, you know, is advanced for a lot of people, but this is kind of a basic thing for red-eared sliders, yellow bellies, mud turtles, map turtles, lots of things like that. Um, and it's not too difficult. Find a container that fits if you want a, a basket, or not a basket, but a lay box. Uh, I just used a five and a half gallon tank there. You could use totes like that if you had bigger tanks. Um, but this just as easily could have been a piece of cork bark I've had it be in the middle of a tank before, which is really nice because the turtles can enter it from both sides. Uh, I've had it up against a corner before where they can kind of come over here and chill and you've got your heat lamp hanging down right above it, UVB over the water and the basking part. Uh, you know, so there's lots of options here. This is just the way I'm doing it. And if I had larger turtles, I would have made this a six foot long tank and I would have used uh, a two foot front to back depth tank. So that's, you know, at least a 150, if not a 180. Um, but that's also why I don't have big turtles is because I don't want to dedicate that much space typically. Uh, a 125 is okay also. If you really just have one small slider, you could do a, a 75, but uh, realize that that might get a little cramped with this style of building. Um, so yeah, if you guys enjoyed the turtle build, uh, go ahead and leave a like, check out all my other videos, clearly I'm fish focused, uh, but I do like turtles and I might do a few more turtle videos, especially at least the one on my turtles uh, update and then I need to build the, the, uh, like the plant and veggie station for them that I want and things like that. You can ask questions too and we'll answer them for you. And uh, as always, I appreciate you watching and we'll see you in the next video.